again. All right, so I'm here with Aslan, uh, all the way from another part of the world. I'm connected to his screen. Uh, and so because he's my student, I'm going to teach him how to draw target zone one for taking trades. So I know you've been trading uh, just for a few days. I mean, you tried it before, but you stopped it, but you're still intrigued by it. My, my recent videos got you intrigued, right? Right, so you've taken this trade probably on uh, the one minute chart. Right, let's go to the one minute chart. Now, I'm going to use this example because uh, it is a very good setup one. You have broken one rule of entering before the break of the box, but that is because you don't have the relevant software to help you do that. Anyway, now what if you knew before entering a trade, the exact location where you would exit with profit. So we know that there are, okay, you were saying something? Right. It's still going down. Yeah. Right, so let me now show you this. Now this is a very good trade from two point of view because one, the market is already moving. This is the main point in our trading. A lot of people will not take a trade here because they think that the market has already moved and they shouldn't take a trade. But our, our main secret of success is that we actually think different to what the majority of people do. Uh, we actually go into the markets that are moving. And instead of thinking about, oh, it's going to turn around now because it's moved up, we actually take the position like the professional traders would do. They wait for the market to move and then they get into it. Uh, believing that it will, because it's moving, it will continue to move. That is actually the mindset that makes you a, prof, uh, a more profitable trader because that's how they think and this is what the market actually does. But majority of the traders would think the other way. But anyway, I'm, 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 I need to come back to this main topic, which is the Tigers are one. Now, I'm actually... So this is my live account that I've taken a trade on this. And now I'm going to go to your chart uh, to show you so that you can see. Uh, anyway, so I, I saw this uh, pattern developing on the hourly time frame, And for reasons that I can't go into more detail right now, because the video will be too long, I knew that I had to go to the M30 chart. And when I went to the M30 chart, I saw the perfect setup one. And let me go back. If it's there, no, your chart is not updated yet. Still. Oh, this look at this. Such a beautiful setup one, even on the M1 chart. I mean, I can demonstrate it on this. So I don't know if you can see it. Can you see this bit? It's a Fibonacci expansion lines, right? So. If you remember yesterday, I went into customize and when you install a new MT4, it's not displayed by default, right? So you have to come here and this thing would be, let me just take it back there. So it, this won't be here. It actually is going to be somewhere here. So what you do is you click on it and you select the location here where you want it. So probably below the dra drawing lines or just above this, you insert it. And you can actually move it up and down if you want, you know, if you want to. So as you can see, it changes its position up there. Now I want it here, right next to the Fib ex retracement. Now this Fib expansion tool is really powerful if you know how to use it. Now in conjunction with uh, my free guide, um, which allows you to learn to count Elliott Wave in 10 seconds, uh, link is in the description you can learn to use this tool. So if you know how to count the waves and then you combine this knowledge with it, you will get about 80 to 85% win rate on this mechanism. So what you do is that you start where you thought was the start of wave three. Now, based on the concept explained in the 10 second Elliott Wave book, you would, you would know that before taking a setup one, we wait for the market to create a peak like this so the peak on the AO or the Ames wave. And then you want to wait for the AO to cross the zero line. 
you have the tight gator tight box red dot that's the entry alert aims entry alert and then you would make your entry here but before you make the entry you want to find out where would be your exit with profit and to do that I'm going to do this again you click on this you click and hold there because that's where price originally started going down which would be the start of three and then what is the lowest point of this wave down it's this one so I'll bring it here and then I will drag the other leg of this web expansion to where the highest point of the market was near the cross of the zero line so around this peak this is the price high that corresponds to this peak and so this is wave four this is the peak of wave four this is the peak of wave three when the price was here we probably thought this was wave four but then later on we found out that actually this wasn't wave four this was actually a four within the wave three down this is getting a little bit complicated but we'll have other examples and then you draw this here and identify the peak of wave 4, draw the next one here. And as you can see, you have the Fib expansion 61.8. You can already see it. Can you see if you entered the market here, your stop loss would be there, which is just 7 points. Then it went up and down and you're waiting and waiting and waiting. You're not exiting because you'll wait for the stop loss to be hit. But your target point would have been just above this. Now let me now adjust that for you because this is what we do with it. So you go inside to the Fib expansion properties, you go to the Fibo levels, you double click on this and simply change this or add target zone 1, TZO, TZ1. There's actually a cool trick you can display the prices with it as well. So put an at sign and uh, dollar percent and click OK oh sorry it's actually the other way around let's go there again yeah percentage sign that symbol and dollar so that's shift 5 and shift 4 on your keyboard and now it shows the price level there as well so this is another cool trick so I suggest that when you make an entry here and your stop loss is there put your target point a few pips above the target zone one and target zone one this is the secret would be the fib expansion 62% now you can call it 61.8 but you know 62% what it means is that the structure of the market that we have identified is that when the market moves in wave one or wave three like we call in Elliott wave uh, terminologies if it moves let's say 35 pips in this direction and then it consolidates to create a setup one it would usually go at least 62 percent of that move and you would with it which it just did actually even this would be considered as hitting the target zone one because remember in forex and in trading we don't talk about like pinpoint exact location it's all it's almost always like a zone so that's why I, I, I try drawing boxes like this so if anywhere price stops within that box you know a few pips plus and minus it would do it now why is this market actually not stopping at target zone one and I'll tell you that as well let's go to the hourly chart and you can see I'll delete that target zone one you can see there's a three down and a four up on this. Now, the techniques that I can't discuss in this video now, if you watch that video and the video and the 10 second to edit wave ebook, you'd find out that the correct way of counting waves is to have at least a hundred candles on the chart. So this one is only 32. So what I'll do is that I will split that. So I'll go to M30. And now that I've gone to M30, between wave 3 and wave 4, I have at least 60 uh, candles. Now, this is another rule that I will talk in another uh, video, but uh, quickly, 
through through years of uh, trial and error uh, and trying this, we, we found out that uh, the age old, which which um, Aslan probably don't know, is that to count Elliot Wave, we needed 100 to 140 bars on AO. But then we learned that actually that is the number for a completed wave. And when the wave is completed, it has value, but it doesn't have value for this particular trade. So then we did comprehensive research and earlier this year we found out that actually the, the minimum amount of bars that you look for are 40 and the maximum is 96 and those have to be counted between the start of wave 3 to the peak and then from the end of wave 3 to the peak of wave 4 so around here so if I do that then I have at least let's say 60 candles and this is valid I can also go to the M15 chart the same chart now has about 120 uh, candles which is too much for me so what I'll do I'll go back to M30 so M30 is giving me a very good picture of wave 3 down wave 4 up and a setup 1 right now the trade that we were looking at was in this area right now let me go back to the M1 chart and if you see, I, I drew, okay, um, a target zone one from there to there. Now, it hit it first, and it hit it again, and it's kind of consolidating. But will the price actually stop here or not? That's not really important. If you were trading the M1 chart, what you have done is that you had risked seven pips, actually 6.5 pips, and you got out 13 to 15 pips. So you've done your trick. You invested $100 and you made 200 back. So your job is done on M1, wait for the next setup. But if you were trading the M30 chart, that target zone one does not apply to you. And because now this is a bit complicated. Now, if you were at the next level of trading, like we have three stages in AIMS, stage one, stage two, stage three, if you were more experienced, let's say a year and two years into your trading, you could actually predict to say whether there will be another setup or not, because on the M30 chart, which you can see it's gone actually into yesterday as well, which was Friday, right? You can, you can actually draw another Target zone one here. So this is the fractal geometry that we talk about, you know, multiple time frames. And now you can see that from the M30 chart, we have another target zone available to us. So there's another 32 pips in there. And and I know you might not see it, but let me bring my uh, trade that I uh, took on my main account. Well, not my main account, but one of the accounts. And I took it here after it broke and it was based on this concept that target zone one is suggesting when I drew my target zone one it is telling me that price can go to 0 0.8831 let me just come back to your screen now so as you can see here so Aslan you don't know but on my live screen I have taken a trade here because that was an M30 trade, right? And my stop loss, because the box is too big, I don't want to take that risk. I'm using this level for my stop loss. So my stop loss is here and my entry is here. So that's 20 pip stop loss. And my target would be around there. So that would be just less than, just about two pips less than 40, which is two R. So what we want to do is always have one R. So one is, if. R is one unit. So if we have one unit of risk, we want to make two units of profit. And this is the key to success. This this is setup one explained actually in one video. So you I can actually say without any reservation, if you know how to draw target zone one, you know everything. You know the whole setup one and all that concept. It just comes to you. It's one of those things, you know, like at cricket, they say, watch the ball and play straight and the rest will come to you automatically. 
and like Kevin Patterson said, even forget about footwork. He says, don't, 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 don't think about football. Uh, football. <laughs> what, what am I saying? <laughs> don't, don't think about footwork. And like when you're teaching the new kids, don't tell them about footwork. Tell them to have your head straight, keep watching the ball, and move your head towards the ball. And he says, he professes this, that when you do this, the footwork will automatically follow your head because your body follows your head. You know, our consciousness is in our head. That's where we see things, that's where we hear and everything. So in, in trading, I'm saying that if you know risk management and you know how to draw target zone one, from at least our perspective of this technique that we use, which, and I'm going to say it slowly, trading the breakouts in the direction of the trend. Now, there's a lot of, and you probably won't know, uh, Aslan, because you're new to it, the older guys keep saying, oh, you know, they have a lot of reservations. There are a lot of opinions about breakouts. Oh, breakouts are this and breakouts are that. All kind of nasty words you can imagine. The reality is you can make amazing trades with breakout trades, but not everyone know, you know, not everyone knows uh, that what type of breakouts are the breakout trades that give you an edge. And we know which type of them. And I've just said it and I'll say it again. The breakout trades, tra the breakout trades that you want to take are the ones that are breakouts in the direction of higher time frame trends. I gave you two secrets in this video. So that's it. I'm not going to talk about it more. Do you have any questions? And that's the end of part two of three. Please tune in again tomorrow. Same time for part three.